Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my RHCE practice session series where I am self-assessing whether or not I'm prepared for my Red Hat Certified Engineer exam. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video as well as invite anyone who's watching who has not subscribed to click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do. Also, if you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure that you click like and feel free to share it with others that might find it useful. So in this video, we are continuing along with the understand core components of Ansible objectives, and we're going to be looking at playbooks in this um, video. A couple of things to remember. First, this is not intended to be authoritative information, nor is it intended to be a tutorial. Rather, it's an opportunity for me to go through the objectives and assess whether or not I'm ready to handle tasks on the RHCE that would be related to the objective. At the end of the video, I'll, I'll make that determination and ideally I'm ready to go. Otherwise, I know what I need to be looking at between now and about um, four weeks or so from now when I have my RHCE exam. That being said, I do try to have the information as accurate as possible. And so that way, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you wrong about particular things, as well as this might be beneficial to you if you yourself are studying for the Red Hat Certified Engineer exam. You might find um, how I might troubleshoot a problem or if I um, come upon some type of roadblock, how, how I work, or work around it. You might find that useful for your own studies as far as your own strategies for handling problems and such. So getting right into it, I'm already logged into my Ansible control node and I've pre-created a little functioning environment to, to be able to, to work with this. And there's not a whole lot I'm going to cover with, with playbooks because if you've watched any of the other videos in the series, you, you, you've seen some of playbooks. And I talked about the um, anatomy of a play in the, uh, the last video about plays themselves, but there are a couple of things that I do, do want to mention with playbooks. So first of all, let us create a playbook. So we'll call it playtest.yml. You do not have to put .yml or .yaml at the end of your file names, but it's a general good practice to do that simply just to, to make it a bit more human readable. From the Linux perspective, it doesn't care. I mean, it'll, it'll recognize that this is YAML and we'll, we'll you know, read the file as necessary. But we humans, it's nice to see, you know, .yml for um, YAML files or .yaml. I tend to do just the, the three letters there for the extension. We'll begin a YAML file with our three dashes and in the last video we talked about play, so let's make a little play here. We're going to give it a name. We'll say um, display a message. All right, and hosts. We'll do this against all hosts. We're not going to become for this, and this is going to have one task in it. It'll be, we we'll use the good old debug module. And just say hello world. All right, so that is an entire playbook. It is a playbook of a single play. Now, if you want to run multiple plays, then that is basically what a playbook is. It is a, a collection of plays. Just like a play is a collection of uh, tasks and possibly some handlers and roles and such, your playbook is a collection of plays. And so you know, if I wanted to, I could end the video right now and say, that's it. That's everything you need to know about playbooks. But you know, it's not too far from, from the truth. I mean, that's basically what it is, a, a, a collection of plays. But there are a couple of things that, that we can do with this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is one of the areas of which I am weakest with my prep for RHCE. And I know for a fact between now and, and, and August that I'm going to need to, to, to do some review with terminology and such. But I want to talk about tasks actually for a moment, even though this is a video about playbooks. With tasks, you can both include and import tasks. And one of the differences between that is importing a task or, you know, Im importing like an external file that has tasks in it. That is actually adding the tasks to the playbook versus including tasks are when you know, you're, you're doing the same thing. You're looking to an outside source, but those tasks are included at the time the include is called. It's not imported in, into the entire playbook. So the, the reason for mentioning that, I am fairly certain that you can do imports in at the playbook level as well. So in this playbook, we, we, we can import another playbook. Now, I'm not 100% sure on that. So... I know, like I said, I know you can do that with tasks. So I'm curious. I'm going to, actually, we're going to save this. And let's run it real quick just to make sure that it works. Playbook, play, 
test.yml and this should not have any problems. Should give us four hello worlds. Excellent. All right, so now we're gonna make another playbook. We're gonna call it playtest2.yml. What I'm going to try to do is import the other playbook. And I'm fairly certain it would be import underscore playbook and the name of it. Now, again, this is this is like gray area with me. Yes, I've, I've, I've read about it. I know I've read about it with tasks and such. So really this is an experiment. And I will say uh, with your own preparation and such, sometimes you will find that experimenting with things like this help keep the knowledge in your head a, a, a bit longer because you're actually touching it and trying this. And if there's errors, see what the errors are and, and troubleshoot from there. I will say this particular idea of importing and, and, and including, I've mainly just read about rather than actually done it. So we'll do import playbook. And I think I just do the playbook name. So playtest.yml. And let's see what happens with this. See if my intuition is correct. So Ansible playbook playtest2.yml. Well, it hasn't complained about syntax. Got the facts. Ah, so so it did import the playbook. Cool. All right. So that's that's what I want to see. I am curious. Though. I want to take a look at Ansible. Let's look at man Ansible playbook. So I'm curious to see if there is an option that might talk about importing stuff. Can I list the host. Yep. We can list tasks in that. Can you list plays? think you can do that scroll yeah so there's nothing about importing with that which doesn't surprise me and we're gonna look at ansible doc dash l grep for <laughs> just typing out the command that I'm wanting to do rather than the actual command I need we're gonna grep for play okay so import playbook is it's a module hmm I guess that would make sense didn't, I didn't necessarily specify a task. Let's take a look at this. Ansible doc import playbook. If I spell Ansible correctly, that will help. All right, so include a list of plays to be executed. Yep, it'll be included at the top level. You can't use this action inside a play. Okay, that's curious because I, I thought I had... had you know, define the list of a play. It looks like that's all, all it is. All right, so let's do let's VI back into our playtest2.yaml. And I'm not actually going to do a name. I'm just going to have a simple line of import playbook. And let's see what happens. Playbook must be a list of plays. Yeah, this this is what I thought with that. However, this said, includes a file with a list of plays to be executed. Yeah. Files with a list of plays can only be included at the top level. You cannot use this action inside of a play. Maybe that means I couldn't do like a task that is import playbook. Let's see what happens with that. So let's go back. Playtest2.yaml. And here we go. Name. Testing. Playbook. Import. So we know just that and import playbook work. I'm curious if we do this. Tasks. Name, import, playbook. I'll bet this is going to complain about not having any hosts, but let's see. Let's see, import playbook has X parameters. Yeah, so I, I guess it truly does just need to be same indentation as name, which makes sense because it talked about top level. So we have that. So we have our playbook. and We can import it. Cool. All right, so let's see. Now, I'm pretty sure we can do this because I I know I'm I'm with the the Fedora infrastructure project, which sounds all cool, but I really haven't been able to touch much in the last month or so because I'm focusing on the final preparation for RHCE. But I remember in some of their Ansible stuff, I think they had some playbook imports. So let's go back to playtest2.yml and let's make another play name second play. So I'll have a task or host, we're just going to do this against local host. Tasks, name, show a new message. Again, we'll use debug. You know, I could probably be doing other um, other modules, but I think I'm saving that for the actual objectives for modules. I'm just using debug for some of these things. 
here's, I don't need to do quotes for that. Here's a new message. All right. So let's see what happens here. Okay. So it ran the first playbook and then it, it ran the, the second play in there. All right. So now I'm especially curious. Let's see if we can do this twice in a row. So let's add a line name, import the same playbook again. All right. So let's see what happens. Let me clear my screen here. Okay, so so it, it did what I expected. So that import playbook is simply, you know, basically adding that play that external playbook to to your actual playbook. Now, the thing I'm curious about, because now this has me thinking about, all right, so what about variables? And I guess, you know, let's try that. So let's do, um, let's go back to our original play test. Oops, playtest.yml and. We're going to do hello world from, and we'll do foo. I don't think this is going to work, but I'm, I'm just, I'm curious. So playtest 2yml And let's see if we can give this some vars. I'm actually going to get rid of this other stuff. Because we've already proven what we needed to for that. Oops. All right. Let's see what happens here. Ah, so it took the variable from the original play and it fed that to foo in the playbook. All right, so now this makes me wonder about um, about precedent. So playtest2.ym, oh, no, that's not what I want to go. I want to go back to the original playtest. And let us... Call that internal foo. And let's see what happens here. That's curious. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the playbook that I'm calling, whatever variables are, are defined in that to, to take place there. So this is something that I'm, I'm obviously going to need to read a bit more about because, like I said, I had some kind of cursory reading about Im importing playbooks. And I was actually kind of surprised that uh, I, I still re remember the, the command and, and how to use it. But things that I would want to know is how the variable precedent works. And I would encourage you, if you're studying for your RHC exam, don't just stop with, hey, I'm able to import a playbook and it, it looks like it works. I would encourage you to kind of drill down as, as I'm going to do as far as finding about finding out about how the, the variable stuff works and how the, the precedent works. That's, that, that's important things to know, I think, because I think it's entirely possible in the exam that you would have some type of task that has you, you know, write more than one playbook and then you have like the one playbook to rule them all and what it's doing is just bringing in your other, other like sub playbooks together. So there is one other thing that I want to look up. Let's go back to the Ansible doc dash L and grep again for play. I don't think there's an include playbook. Oh, well, maybe if I give grep something to look for, that will be helpful. There's importing roles. Yeah, importing playbooks. I don't think there's an inc include a play or a task list. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm thinking there. But can you include a playbook? Well, let's see what happens. Uh, let's do. Let's actually copy playtest two. We're going to copy it to playtest three. And rather than import playbook, we're going to say include playtest.yml. Let's see what happens. All right, so let's see. Include for playbook includes. Ah, so that, that must be a deprecated thing. You should use import playbook instead. Feature will be removed in version 2.12. I think current is 2.9, if I recall correctly. You know, and I wonder if the same, the same idea was with include as far as, you know, it's just an at runtime versus importing. You're actually adding to your, your playbook. I wish there was a way to, um, to just list the plays within the playbook. Let me take a look at Ansible playbook one more time in the man page. So I know you can list tasks, but can you list plays? Or maybe listing tasks will tell you what you want. All right, so let's do this. Ansible playbook, list tasks. 
and we'll do play test dot yml. And spell playbook is probably going to work better. Okay, so one play and it has a task. Ah, I think I know what's up with this. Okay, so playbook play test two. Let's cat play test two. Okay, so it got the it got that from the. All right, that's what I, what I suspected. Now let's do play test three dot yml. Okay, so, so so it still gathered that. That's curious. All right, so this this session uh, practice session really is more of a, a discovery thing rather than just uh, rehashing some stuff that, that I thought I knew. And I encourage you to do that with some of your your own practice sessions. So I'm not going to officially call this uh, objective a a fail for you because I, I do have an, an idea of just at least handling single playbooks and understanding basic concepts of importing a playbook. But this is definitely one I am going to put on my list to uh, to review again between now and the exam because, like I said, I want to dig into how variables are going to function when you're importing playbooks and such. So hopefully you found this useful. If you did, make sure that you click like on the video and also feel free to share it with others that might find it useful as well. I want to thank returning subscribers again for watching another video and encourage you if you haven't subscribed yet to click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Also, feel free to leave comments. You can ask questions or give praise or critique. I'll accept it all and as I have time and ability, I'll, I'll try to respond to it. Thanks again for taking the time to watch and I'll see you the next time.